How will Manchester United line up with Casemiro? There's a sentence I did not think I would ever be saying. Not only are we signing a defensive midfielder, we've signed one of the best defensive midfielders in world football. You can try and say he's a little bit too old, but you can also take a look at the fact that, what, he's four months older than Salah. Uh, he's younger than Van Dijk. He's younger than De Bruyne. Anyway, the age is not an issue. How do we how do we set up with Casemiro in the team? In this video, and I think we're all going to enjoy this video, I certainly am, I'm going to take a look at the tactics, the starting 11 and the formation that Ten Hag will use with Casemiro in the team. And we're going to take a look at Anthony and Gakpo and the differences that we would have from a tactical perspective with those two different signings. Of course, it doesn't take away from the energy and the main focus right now, which I've said at the start of every video for a while. Honestly, you don't have to tell me this. I've been... Very vocal against the Glazers, publicly on this channel, using it as a platform for years and years and years. And I'm glad that everybody else, that, that, not everybody else, but the energy behind it now is fantastic. So everyone, if you can, get to that protest on Monday. But let's talk about, as I said, Ca Casemiro and where we line up with him. Because that's not a conversation I ever thought we were going to have here on United People's TV. Honestly, I think it is an outrageously good signing. I hope it's an outrageously good signing. And I hope we don't get stung well, let's be honest, the signings that we've made from Real Madrid over the last few years uh, haven't exactly worked out. Fingers crossed that Casemiro will. I've, got, I've certainly got more hope that he will. And he's just an elite baller in his position. I don't need to show you where his position is. You already know where he is. In his career, he's had 300 and, what, 380 appearances and 371 of them have come as a defensive midfielder. We know exactly what position he's going to play for Manchester United. But how and who is he going to line up alongside, I think is a more interesting conversation. Because taking a look at this team here, I believe this was a starting eleven that played against Brentford. And the less said about that game, the better. But if we're being honest, I think it's... I'm not really sure how our midfield is going to completely set up. Because there's a different... There's varieties and options. We know full well that Eric Ten Hag will play with that 4-2-3-1 formation. A 4-2-3-1 formation, which effectively, when you're in possession, switches to a 4-3-3 because whoever's a deeper line midfielder drops behind the other central midfielder. And that's kind of how you shape up in possession. Out of possession, you kind of drop a little bit deeper into a 4-2-3-1. But on paper, you're looking at Fred going out there and Casemiro coming in. But this is the interesting thing and the interesting conversation, I believe, because I think there's a conversation to be had. You can probably throw Bruno in this too. But we'll speak about that number 10 role. But who do you think should partner Casemiro? Because first and foremost, one thing we know, let's bring him down here. This is basically the end of McTominay as a starter for Manchester United. McTominay will not be starting on the regular for our club anymore. Simple as that. I don't think he should be. I think he can be a good squad player. Effectively, what you're going to be seeing from McTominay now that Casemiro's arrived, he's going to be on the bench and he'll maybe come on for the last 15, 20 minutes and try and do... I mean, if he's going to improve in that role, Learn from the best, right? Learn from Casemiro. But he's going to definitely operate there. Now, if you're looking at how Casemiro set up with Fred in the Brazil, Brazil team, they're, they're a partnership that's worked very well together. Fred and Casemiro are a good blend. Casemiro, a pure ball-winning number six. Somebody, One re thing I'm really, really looking forward to seeing is I guarantee you that both of our centre-backs, whoever's playing, will look significantly better because Casemiro is sitting in front of them. I've I've slated Harry Maguire. I've been very vo vocal against him. But our centre-backs have never had the protection that they needed in the Premier League. They've Because we haven't had that proper holding midfielder who knows how to screen this area. Casemiro, elite that space up for breakfast. He will improve our centre-backs, and that's something I definitely am looking forward to seeing. But in terms of his partner... I think it's got to be either Fred or Ericsson, and it depends what Eric Ten Hag wants to do. I think Ericsson has shown that he's fit and capable of playing 90 minutes and playing inside that role. Quite physically demanding, of course, it's physically demanding playing in central midfield. But Fred and Casemiro have got a partnership. They know how each other plays. So I think it's a really interesting dynamic. So I think you could probably, I, in reality, I think that's probably the most likely. Is Casemiro sitting just behind Fred? And maybe Bruno and Eriksen swapping in and out. But I effectively think that it's going to be Eriksen swapping in and out for both Bruno and Fred across the season. Let's be honest, in the last couple of games, let's be honest so far, everybody really has massively underperformed. Bruno Fernandes on paper might be a guaranteed starter, but I don't think he is. You could even see that in certain occasions with Eriksen going into the number 10 and Fred operating behind him. Or on paper, you could see Eriksen playing in front of Casemiro 
and Bruno playing up there. What we've got here genuinely is options. Different three different threesomes giggly, that we could use there. And it all rotates around the base of Casemiro. He's, it's not exactly Frenkie de Jong. It's a very different type of player. Casemiro is not that deeper lying playmaker that Frankie de Jong would have been. So we're still going to need questions about bringing it out from the back. And maybe on paper, that's why Ericsson would be better to play alongside him because he'd be better playing as a deeper line playmaker than Fred would be. And because of Fred, we know, of course, is better when he's towards the opposition box than his own half. But it's going to be really interesting to see how he lines up there. Because Casemiro, oh, mate. I know it might not work out. I know blah, 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 about the, the concerns and the worries. But if it does work out, my word, I cannot wait to see us play with an actual genuine defensive midfielder. But moving on from Casemiro, we've got to have a conversation about Anthony. Because again, this definitely throws in interesting and new dynamics into our attack. Because if you look at Anthony's stats, you know what Anthony's stats are. You know full well that the majority of his career, he's playing out on the right-hand side. He is a right winger. And you'll also know that that's kind of where Jaden Sancho's best performances have come so far during the preseason. So, so if, you're, if we're looking at signing Anthony, you're effectively kissing goodbye to Marcus Rashford, certainly in the starting 11. And you're also going to be accommodating for Anthony by shifting Sancho out to the left. Would that be a problem for you? You let me know what you think about that. I don't think it'll be a problem for Manchester United. And I also don't think it would really be a problem for Jaden Sancho. We all thought he was going to be signed as a right winger. I do think he's better on that side, but he's not bad on the left-hand side. In fact, last season, his most productive performances actually did come down this left flank. And I'll tell you what, a partnership with Malasir down there with, with Jaden Sancho is something I could absolutely get on board with. So if we sign Anthony, there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever he will start on that right wing. It won't be a case of Man United signing Anthony, Jaden Sancho keeping his spot there, and Anthony all of a sudden getting shifted to the left. As I said, one look at his career, he is a right winger. Anthony, what Anthony loves to do, uh, and it's a bit like a, a bit Iron robin if you want to call it that. That player, that player who loves to get to this area, cut inside, shoot from around about here. That's a, that's a move that he has made his. He's very, very good at it. He really, really is. So there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever that if Manchester United do sign Anthony, that he will go on that right wing, in my opinion anyway, that we will see Jadon Sancho shift to the left. And the person who's going to be coming out of the starting 11 is going to be Marcus Rashford. And he would then have to force his way back into the team. His competition would therefore be Jadon Sancho for that left-hand side because we all know that Rashford's pretty ineffective on the right. I think so anyway. We all know so anyway. And the, the interesting thing and the different part here is that if Manchester United do get priced out of a move for Anthony from Ajax, then it looks like we're going to go for Gakpo. I don't think we'll get both, but shit me, if United are spunking the money the, the way they're spunking it in this window, I don't know, maybe we'll get both. But Gakpo is a different type of player to Anthony. We go and take a look at his career now. He can operate on the right-hand side. He's played there certain times. He can play centre-forward, but left wing is his position. So if we sign... Gakpo, then Sancho will be keeping his spot there on the right-hand side, get Anthony out there, and it will be Gakpo coming down to the left-hand side. And in both equations, you will see and notice, of course, it's Marcus Rashford who's missing out, because if we sign Gakpo instead, I fully imagine that he'll be going down the left-hand side. He's somebody who operates a little bit. Anthony is somebody who, if he plays on the right, he's a very direct winger. He'll try and take his players on. He, he'll try and cut inside and shoot. He's tricky. He's uh, He's got more flair about his game. Not that Gakpo doesn't have flair in his game, but Gakpo is more capable of playing in this sort of position with his back to goal. Holding the ball up, bringing in his teammates, like receiving the ball in the air here, bringing it down with a touch and bringing it into Bruno. He can go out the outside. He can cut in the inside. He can do quite a lot. But Gakpo would be a very different type, of, I would argue, a very different type of signing to Anthony. I can see the merits of both. If I'm being completely honest and being completely selfish, I'd love to have both of them. They both operate on different wings. We definitely need strengthening in both positions. But the one player who misses out, no matter who we sign, really, Gakpo or Anthony, that's Marcus Rashford. 
Uh, and I think that's probably the uh, as, that's a fair reflection of, of his performances over the last 18 months, two years. United have got to stop being so sentimental. If a player is underperforming for that long, you go and sign better alternatives. And that's what we will do if we sign Anthony or if we sign Gakpo. As I said, the two very different types of players. The one that's kind of easy to have a conversation about how we line up is Casemiro. We know exactly where he's playing. He will play in that role. Who partners him and who plays in the number 10, I think that could be rotated. But Casemiro, will, that's going to be his position. And Matomine is a player who misses out because of Casemiro being signed. And if we sign Gakpo on the left or we sign Anthony on the right, it's Rashford is a player who misses out and gets, gets shifted out of the 11 and has to force his way back in. But that is, in my opinion, how I think we'll set up and line up with Casemiro. And there's an interesting conversation to be had there about Anthony and Gakpo. We just had the beginnings of it there. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you are new. But I always said that we would be happy about our team coming the end of the window. I didn't expect it to go down in the way it's gone down. There's so many reasons to be frustrated. And I'll reiterate what I said at the start of the video. Don't let it take away from the energy against the Glazers. Be there on Monday. Focus on that. But you can be happy about signings being made at the same time. I just want to say that. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Take it easy. <laughs>